The nice thing about Sail and Key is the design equations are relatively straightforward, once we will look at those in a second. Um, it's one of the most widely used filter topologies, and one of the reasons is, is primarily because of its stability. You can design uh, a Sail and Key filter and then pretty much choose uh, most of the audio op amps and, and the filter will just work as you as you would expect. So if we look at the sail and key low pass design, um, looks something like this. So this is a second order filter. This is a split rail design. So this is one consideration um, that you have to think about. Is your filter going to be put into a circuit which has got a split rail, so plus 16, minus 16, or just a single rail it would be zero volts here or ground and uh, plus 16 in which case you would have to to bias this point here uh, to half the supply voltage so when we look at the um, the operation of this filter why is it a low pass well if you consider the extremes of operation of these capacitors at low frequencies uh, very low frequencies you could consider these reactances to be very very large so these are effectively open circuit so if this is open circuit and this is open circuit then this signal here would pretty much go straight through because we've got a feedback path here this is a unity gain buffer so we've got a, a low pass and as the frequencies increase uh, across these capacitors the reactances uh, decreases so which would effectively pull this down to ground and so we've got um, this output which will gradually go down to uh, zero volts and we've also got this this negative feedback path here occurring through c2 so i've summarized those um, operations here the uh, relationship between frequency and reactance of of the capacitors is a good way to think about how that circuit is is operating so equations if you want to derive a filter cutoff, then this is the equation. So it's 1 divided by 2 times pi times r times the square root of c1 times c2. So that is the c1 times c2 bracketed. And then you take the square root of the, the whole lot. And these design equations are such that you, you are choosing r1 equals r2. So this r is the value you know if you choose r1 to be 10k then r2 will be 10k and this r will be 10k the q uh, in this case will be 0.5 times the square root of um, the c c2 divided by c1 and basically what that means is if you ever have a um, a situation where c2 equals c1 then you'll get a q of 0.5 for example here so we've made c1 equals c2 the design equations are going to rationalize somewhat so now you've got 1 divided by 2 times pi times r times c and r1 equals r2 so q is 0.5 which um, is okay if you're designing some sweepable filters because it simplifies things because what it means if we want to make this sweepable r1 has got to equal r2 because we've got this design equation here that says so and so we make this variable and we make this variable we keep c2 and c1 fixed so we're able by varying r to change this filter cut, cut off and the q will be uh, fixed at 0.5 we can add gain to these uh, circuits and just uh, as we do with a um, non-inverting amplifier here we've got uh, r3 and an r4 which is specifying the, the passband gain if you like now one downside to this is as you change the gain value A, you, we see a change in Q. And it's one of the drawbacks of the sail and key filter design. High pass, it's simply a case of reversing the uh, C's for R's and the R's for C's. And the design equations are, are identical. So if we look at them side by side, you'll see here we've got our low pass design and our high pass design. The only thing that's changed, the C's changed to an R, the R's have changed to C's, C's changed to an R, and that's it. So, where do you start with, uh, with with choosing values? Well, the first thing to think think about is whether you're running from a positive uh, split, a positive and a negative rail, so a split rail or a single rail, um, and then think about the frequencies that you need to be passed. 
and those that need to be rejected. So you th that will give you an indication of where your filter cutoff needs to be and, and where you, you're going to have to sweep around to. So because of the way that the filters work in terms of reactants and uh, and that has a uh, it, it is variable depending on the frequency, then for high frequencies, we're generally going to use smaller value capacitors and for low frequencies, we're going to use larger value capacitors. And that will be a sort of a, a starting point to aim for and then see where the um, see where the resultant uh, resistor values end up. If you end up with uh, super high mega ohm values of resistors, then try changing the capacitor value and see how that reflects on, on the uh, resistor values. So it is a ca case of sort of trial and error. Things like LT spice will make that a hell of a lot easier because you can quickly enter a new value in and change and see the resultant plot um you know that within a matter of seconds so this is uh, a low pass what i've done is i said okay i'm going to run off a split rail i'm going to choose c1 based on these design equations c2 is equal to c1 times two um, so it's twice the size now when we do this we can then calculate r1 and r2 r1 and r2 are going to be equal to each other as we saw previously um, it's just going to be the capacitor values that um, are out by a factor of two. If we do this, we end up with a Q of 0 0.707, which is ideal for our um, rumble filter designs. Um, so if we were designing a high pass in the same way, this is what we'd aim for. That's, um, you know, th these design equations would be perfect for a Q of 0 0.707. Now, if we, as we mentioned, if we choose C1 to equal C2, and we also make R1 equal R2, this will give us a Q of 0 0.5 and also easily give us a sweepable low pass filter. Design equations in that case would rationalize down. Uh, in fact, they'll rationalize even further because if you think the square root of C1 times C2, if C1 equals C2, then this is C1 or C squared and the square root of anything um, squared is that value. So this will be two times pi times r times c, r1 equals r2, and this will be q is 0 0.5. Likewise for the high pass, if you uh, if we make, um, the, if we change around the components, so make um, all the c's r's and all, all the uh, r's c's, design equations remain the same. You can make r1 equal r2 and c1 equals c2, and we can make this uh, sweepable no problem whatsoever and what you probably if, if you've done the equations or done the math, math, mathematics correctly you'll see that r2 will be half the value of r1 so c1 and c2 will be the same values and r2 will be half the value of r1 but for the sweepable high pass you choose these settings and then what you have to think about is what the range will be so what you want to do is, is say, take a, a value of the cutoff with R equals something very small and then R something very big and see what your range of frequencies are possible with the, uh, the high pass filter. When you put these two together, we are obviously are going to end up with a uh, band pass filter. Put these two together within, within LT Spice itself and show what the overall uh, band pass response is. So when we're making a sweepable filter, we need we also need to add in some series resistors. These end up like end stops to our uh, EQ. So if we go back to this circuit here, what we end up doing, these are our uh, variable resistors and we put in another resistor here and another resistor here. And what that will do is if I take this value and this value down to say zero, we'll always have a remaining series resistor here and here to give us an end stop value. Now, obviously that will give you a value for your either your lowest or your highest frequency. And as you change these values up to the maximum, when you recalculate your end stop frequency, it will be this R2 plus this end stop resistor when you do your your calculations so i hope that's helpful and i hope you can see that the the design equations to come up with these calculations are relatively straightforward uh, just a note on the the q factor you will find <clears throat> excuse me that when you do your lt spice plots 
Um, if you're designing a filter and you've chosen a Q to be 0 0.5, then you will see that the, um, the, the frequency of cutoff will be down at minus 6 dB rather than minus 3 dB. And if you think about what these values represent, Q 0.707 and Q 0.5, you can start to think why that might be. Okay, thank you very much.